you feel like you've been making some sacrifices lately? I can't speak for everyone, but I know a lot of people do. I miss going to eat inside a restaurant. I miss going to Costco and not having to wait in line. And I miss going to the grocery store and not being told which way I have to walk to go down a certain aisle. Think about this. We've been making these sacrifices for about a month and a half. During World War II, people were making much greater sacrifices. Things were being rationed, kind of like they are now, where there's limitations on how much you can buy of certain things. But in World War II, it was all strictly controlled by the government and by ration books. The ration books were filled with stamps which gave you permission to buy stuff. You had to turn them in in order to make the purchase. But even then, you had to hope it was in stock because if it wasn't in stock, it didn't matter if you had a stamp or not. I got a lot of emails from y'all telling me that some of you had been baking over the break. Well, sugar was one of those things that was rationed during World War II, so there wasn't a lot of it available. Foods like meat, cheese, coffee, they were all rationed as well, and some of this rationing went on for years. Most of it ended in 1945 at the end of World War II, but sugar was rationed until 1947. Kind of makes our little over a month of not being able to sit in a restaurant feel petty, doesn't it? All right, now, imagine this. You know that desire you have for things to kind of go back to normal a little bit? I think we all have it a little bit. Americans experienced that after World War II as well, but it was way stronger because they had made such greater sacrifices for such a longer period of time. Additionally, they had also endured a tremendous loss of life during the war as well. So when the war was over, Americans wanted to get back to normal. Getting back to normal meant buying stuff, and because of this, companies were competing to meet the demands of what consumers were wanting to buy. What was the result of this? Well, the result was a boom in innovations and in new technology. The war had helped speed the progress of new technologies that were soon to become a part of our day-to-day -day lives. So this week, we're going to take a look at some of those new technologies. Raw materials such as rubber and metal were hard to come by during World War II because those materials were needed for the troops that were fighting in Europe and in the Pacific. This meant these materials couldn't be used in toys or appliances or other consumer items. So plastic became a product that began to be used more readily and manufacturers quickly learned how to make plastic products that could take the place of those previously used metal and rubber products. Manufacturers also learned that making things with plastic was cheaper so they could make their products more affordable for more people so that more people could have them. Today, plastic is found in almost everything that we buy. So, when you hear older people say things like, oh, they don't make them like they used to, well, it's true, they don't. Consumer goods improve too. The category of consumer goods generally means things that people buy either to use in their homes like dishwashers or washing machines, things like that, or things that they buy to use in their home to entertain themselves, televisions, radios. And this category of goods, oh boy, did it improve quickly as well. Between World War II and today, we've gone from major networks on television like ABC, NBC, and CBS not even having a program to air on television every night to now some cable companies offering hundreds of channels in addition to streaming options like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and us sitting around going, ah, I just can't find anything to watch on TV. I'm so bored. There's nothing good on anymore. For music, radio improved to these eight-track cassettes so people could listen to the song that they wanted to listen to when they wanted to listen to it. Eight tracks became cassette tapes, cassette tapes became CDs, and CDs became MP3 players so that you could buy specific songs until now music is readily available through streaming services like Apple Music. The home video game industry developed and progressed from games like Pong to some of my early childhood favorites. to some of my teen favorites, to some of the beautifully crafted games that my son plays today. 
phones developed from these models that were attached to your wall and had these little squiggly cords that came from the receiver to the base to these smartphones that we have today that allow us to do far more than just talk. We can talk, we can text, we can get email, we can get driving directions, we can play music, we can play games, we can watch Netflix, we can order from Amazon, we can check our daily calendar, we can send money to people, we can even participate in an e-learning class. And all of these things can be done from what we call a phone. Now, knowing all of that, it's pretty clear, isn't it? Post-World War II technology has been great for consumers. Here's a quick look at your assignment for this week. Um, please note that as always, your work that you'll be working on is in the top right hand corner um, of the screen. And when you open that up, you will see the questions um, are organized. There are 10 of them, just like there have been every other week, but they're organized by topic. There's plastics everywhere, consumer goods, the government helps. Well, when we go back over here to your assignment, what you're gonna use to answer those questions this week is this PDF document which is scanned pages from your textbook. Uh, when you open it up, it'll, you'll see that it says advances in technology. But what I want you to see is that like there's a section right here, a subheading called plastics everywhere. And when you go back to your work over here, you'll see that the subheading is listed right there. So you'll find the answers to one and two under the subheading that says plastics everywhere. Um, for the next one, it says consumer goods. So when you read that information under consumer goods, the two um, questions can be answered right here from that category called consumer goods. Send me an email if you have any questions. Thanks.